All right, guys, we're in the fall feast, exciting time of year, and we want to talk about and share with you some things that we see as some themes I'd like to share on the feast, the fall feast in the in this year. OK, so we got our tabernacle set and we want to talk about, OK, Psalm 91 in this video. Principally, we're going to have a couple themes here. We're going to talk about Psalm 91. Where later in the video, we're going to talk about all the feasts in the book of Revelation. So many of you, if you keep the feasts, if you're watching this, many of you keep the feasts. If you don't keep the feasts and you start keeping the feasts, the people say, why are you keeping the feast? Why don't you keep Christmas and Easter? Uh, well, you won't understand the apocalypse unless you understand the feast. So we're going to explain that later. But as we enter this time, it's a significant time. We're in the time of the prophecies being fulfilled. The, the prophecy is at hand, okay? It is now. So, for example, as we enter this time period, all the prophets have talked about this. So, in Joel chapter 2, verse 15, it says, Blow the trumpet in Zion, okay? Then he says, Sanctify a fast and call a solemn assembly. Now, what those are, those are the feasts. So you blow the trumpet on the first day of the seventh month. Okay, then he said, call a fast. The fast is the ninth day of the seventh month leading into Yom Kippur. And then he says, call a solemn assembly. That's an astra in the Hebrew. And that is the eighth day of tabernacles. Okay, so these would be the trumpets of revelation. Okay, so that we would assemble. We would get encamped. We would... Uh, assemble around the throne just like the children of Israel did, okay? So that's really what's going on. That's what we're practicing in these uh, tents, okay? But uh, that's later in the video. We're going to get into the feast with Revelation, okay? But what it says there as well in Joel chapter 2, it says, let the bridegroom come out of his chamber and the bride come out of her hoopah. Okay, guys, I just want to show you our tabernacle here, but I want you to notice that above it, we have our hoopah. So, during the Feast of Tabernacles this year, the priest course for tabernacles is hoopah. And hoopah is the bridal covering. Okay, I just wanted to point that out as we continue in the message. A hoopah is the bridal covering. Okay, it's a bridal covering and... It says, come out of the hoopah. So she was already in the hoopah. Okay, now you come out for what? For prayer. Okay, to, to weep, to mourn between the altar and the porch. Okay, alas, alas, for this day. Whoa, okay. Spare your people, O Yahweh. Now, that prayer and in, in in warfare, I want you to have a theme of warfare here as we look at Psalm 91. Now, if we look at Psalm 91... And I want to focus first off on why we're doing it during the fall feast and the tabernacle. I want you to think about Psalm 91 as the tabernacle. Okay? I mean, many of you may not have thought of it this way. Okay? Most of us read that. It's like, okay, it's a prayer of protection. It's not a prayer. It's a song. It's something that you sing. Okay? Okay? So you can use it. Okay? As... Um, Actually, we're, we're going to go through the video. We're going to see how we use it for casting out demons. Okay, we also use it for um, uh, the warfare, the, the assembly. Okay, so let's look at how Psalm 91 is this tabernacle, is this tent. Okay, he that dwells in the secret place. Secret place in Hebrew is seter. It's a, it's a shelter. Okay, it's a covering. So like we said, hupa. Okay, this is the, the, he that dwells in the covering, in the hoopah of the, um, of the Most High. Okay, so this is the hoopah of the Most High. This is the, the uh, covering. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Okay, so the hoopah is a covering. It's a shelter up above. Actually, we have one here. It doesn't fit in the camera. I'll show you in a second. And then we have... This, this shelter, okay, shelter. So that's what it's talking about. It's talking about a hoopah, all right? And then verse two, I'll say of Yahweh, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I will trust, okay? So this is uh, trusting in him, trusting in his tent, trusting in the fact that even though you dwell in tents and you're vulnerable in a time of war, you're just outside, it is a time when, when you set up your tent, you're in his fortress. That's spiritually what it's, uh, talking about. That's what it's describing, okay? So that's how Yahweh is your fortress and your refuge, okay, that you trust in, 
Okay, when you are in tabernacles. Okay, now verse 4. And you shall cover you through fetters and under his wings shall you trust. Okay, so the other thing is that when the woman is given two wings of an eagle, it's also talking about the tabernacle. We'll get into that later in the video, but this is what is talking about under his feathers and under his wings. She's under the wings, the eagle's wings. Verse 9, because you have made Yahweh your refuge, even the Most High your habitation, ma'on, okay, in the Hebrew, again, this is a house, a habitation. Verse 11, neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling in the King James, but in the Hebrew, the word is not dwelling, it is uh, ohel. Ohel in the Hebrew is the tabernacle. When you see the word tabernacle, it's usually translated into tabernacle from the Hebrew word ohel. So this is talking about, as we can see, the uh, secret place of the Most High, the uh, the habitation, okay, the tabernacle, the ohel, okay. That's what it's uh, clearly talking about. Now it's talking about that in light of. Okay, the children of Israel wandering in the wilderness. They were sheltered under his wings. He said, I'll bear you unto myself. I'll gather you as eagle's wings. Okay. And tabernacling around the throne. So we would do the same thing in the last days. We would tabernacle as an army. Okay, as Yahweh hosts army. All right. Now, what we can see later, and in, in, we'll get into the... Uh, Actually, let's just go through the design elements of the warfare that's happening here. That he who dwells in a single place in the most high shall abide in the shallow and mighty. I'll save the Lord. He is my fortress. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler of the bird and from the noisome pestilence. Okay? So if we build this spiritual tabernacle, this spiritual house, and we dwell in this house, then we should be protected. Okay? That's what we're praying. That's what we're singing. And he shall cover you with feathers under his wings. Shall you trust his truth shall be your shield and buckler. His shield and buckler. Okay, so this is the uh, Ephesians chapter 6. The helmet is to the whole armor of God. It's talking about here, okay? Your loins are girt with truth. All right? And you shall not be afraid by the terror by night. We're going to talk about that in a little... Uh, this is warfare. Warfare against demons. Nor the arrow that flies by day. The pestilence that walks in darkness. Nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. Okay? A thousand shall fall on your side, ten thousand at your right hand, it shall not come nigh you. So this is a war, okay? The way you understand a war is who's winning, who's got more casualties than the other, okay? That's what it's talking about here. They're winning, they're in the war. Only your eyes shall see and behold the reward of the wicked. Because you have made Yahweh, even which is your refuge, even the most high your habitation. There shall no evil befall you, and neither any plague come nigh your O hell, tabernacle, for he shall give his angels charge over you and they shall keep you in all your ways. Okay, so the other thing happens to you, it's the Mahanium. That means the two camps. That means the angels, lion, ox, man, eagle, and the camp of the children of Israel. They work together. The angels worked with the children of Israel when they went to war. Okay, that's the same thing we have in the last days. They will bear you up with your hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Now, verse 13. Okay, now, so that all is that protection, go into war, you see the arrows, you see all that. But verse 13, now we get into the casting out of devils. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder and the young lion and dragon shall you trample underfoot. Okay, so we have the lion, we have the, the serpent, okay, we have the young lion and the dragon. Well, this is what Christ talked about when he sent his 70, okay. When he sent the 70, they returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject. They obey. They are under, okay, us through your name, okay? So they, he was, they were commissioned out. They came back. They, were, they saw the devils were subject, okay, due to Christ's name. Verse 19, he said, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents. We saw the adder, right? on scorpions, okay, and over all the power of the enemy, over the lion, over the dragon, nothing by any means shall hurt you, okay, so this is deliverance, they're casting out devils, he says, yes, I give you power, tread on serpents, scorpions, over all the power of the enemy, nothing by any means shall hurt you, okay, so that's what it was talking about, now, I'm going to show you a mystery, this was known even before Christ, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, they had a document where they used Psalm 91 for casting out devils, called the third song against demons okay you can look this up it's it's uh, 11 q a p o c p s okay that is what you look up in the dead sea scrolls for the code name of this uh prayer or uh casting out devils okay it's an it's a psalm of david 
in its incantation in the name of the Lord to be invoked in the time to the heavens. Okay, so this is speaking of warfare. Now, remember how it said it was the terror by night. Well, the terror by night is demons attacking you in your sleep. Okay, and so they're talking about casting out demons both in your sleep and when you're awake, but this is the warfare. And when he comes to you at night, you will slay him. So you must have your sword. You must have all your uh, weapons of warfare also when you're sleeping. And he says to him, who are you? Depart from humanity and from the offspring of the holy ones. Casting out this devil, even in your sleep, even with your sword. For your face is the face of delusion and your horns are the horns of fantasy and you are darkness and not light. Wickedness and not righteousness. The commander of the army of the Lord will bring you down to the deepest shield. He will close the two gates of bronze through which no light can enter and the sun will not appear unto you that shines upon the righteous. Okay, so he's casting out these demons and this is what they attribute to Psalm 91, the terrors by night. So this is something you want to pray. You can look this up. I can uh, share it with you maybe in a note somehow. But basically... Uh, you want to do this and pray the blood of Jesus over your tabernacle, over your house, over your mind, over your soul, even when you're sleeping in your subconscious, okay? That you would still be in a, a state of warfare, <clears throat> not allowing the enemy to uh, attack you with nightmares and dark dreams and sexual dreams and different types of spirits. That's what it's talking about here, okay? So Christ had given us that authority, all right? As he gave it to the 70 to cast these things out. Now you want to do this also, have this prayer as you go uh, before you go to sleep. Okay, I strongly encourage that. Now, we saw that in Psalm 91, 13. You will tread upon the lion to add a young lion to dragon. You will trample under feet because, verse 14, he has set his love upon me. Therefore, where I deliver him, I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me. I will answer him. I will be with him in time of trouble. I will deliver him. And honor him in long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation, Yeshua or Yehoshua. Okay, so that's Psalm 91. Now what you can see is you can see that and you sing this as well. Make it a song. Sing this. But what is it talking about? It's talking about a tabernacle. It's talking about warfare. It's talking about casting out demons. Okay, that's what we can uh, clearly see. And, you know, it's also this shelter, this hupa. Okay, and we have precisely... This year, the priest course of Hoopa on the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay, now, let's just talk real quick, and let's talk about the seven uh, Feasts of Yahweh, and then look at them in Revelation. Okay, now, when we look at the seven major Feasts of Yahweh, Many equate that to the menorah. So like the menorah has seven lamps to it, as you can see. And these would each represent the seven feasts of Yahweh. Okay, so that if you went from one end to another, in the center you would have the Feast of Weeks, Shavuot. And then you have Spring Feast and Fall Feast. So you have Passover, Unleavened Bread, and then First Fruits. Okay, then you have Shavuot. Feast of Weeks, Pentecost, and then we enter the Fall Feast. You have the Memorial Blowing Trumpets, Yom Teruah, or Day of the Shout. And then you have Yom Kippur, and then we have Tabernacles, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to focus mainly on these feasts. We're going to have other ones too. So you can see in the seventh month, you have Yom Teruah. We're going to also see in the book of Revelation another one that is a feast, it's a memorial, because you blow the trumpet on the beginning of every month, not just the seventh month, not just Yom Teruah, you blow the trumpet every month, and there's another significant one, which is before Passover. So you blow the trumpet, actually you play the harp on the first day of the first month, okay? So that one in the book of Revelation, they feature that a little bit, but we're going to see all these feasts, okay, in the book of Revelation, Okay, here's our notes and the feasts in Revelation. Now, inevitably, you guys, many of you will just ask me very simply, Leland, just tell us when the feasts are. And according to Enoch calendar, Feast of Trumpets, September 15th, first day of the seventh month. Yom uh, Kippur, September 24th, 10th day of the seventh month, first day of Tabernacles, 
September 29th through October 5th. And the 8th day, the 22nd day of the 7th month is the Solemn Assembly. And as we were mentioning here, here is Hoopa. Hoopa, this is the 7th day. So Hoopa is serving these days in this portion of Tabernacles. That was our Hoopa that we were showing you earlier. Okay, so let's look at the Feast of Revelation. Okay. And we can clearly see them. It's it's very clear. It's very obvious. But guys, many of the apostate church, they don't keep the feast. They don't understand any of these things. Okay? But when we look at what's happening with the symbolism in the book of Revelation, it's quite clear these are the feasts. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use a, a reference point, our diagram here, so as to just show us where we are in uh, in time. Okay, so our first one, we go to Revelation 1, 10. John was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. That's a Sabbath. Okay, the Lord's Day is a Sabbath. And he heard a great voice of a trumpet. Okay, so now this trumpet is the beginning of the apocalypse. Okay, that's in Revelation chapter 1. All right? So this trumpet, he hears a voice of a trumpet. That's Yom Teruah. Just like we have the Feast of Trumpets. Okay, that's the Feast of Trumpets beginning the book of Revelation. So the book of Revelation begins in the fall feast, okay? That then trumpet ushers in the time period. Of course, our, our time period is mostly going to be confirmed by the book of Esther, okay? So we have the Feast of Trumpets beginning the apocalypse, all right? Then what we see in Revelation chapter 1 still, we see Alpha and Omega, one like the Son of Man in, in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Okay, the seven menorah, the seven ecclesia. Okay, this is also Yom Kippur. So he is acting as high priest um, in, the high, in the priestly garment. And Alpha and Omega is doing that on Yom Kippur. So this is the Yom Kippur that's just 10 days after Yom Teruah. Okay, that's what's happening in Revelation chapter 1. Then we get to Revelation chapter 4 verse 1. John sees a door opened in heaven in the first voice of a trumpet, saying, come up. Okay, so the first voice of a trumpet, what was that? That was Yom Teruah. So now this is Yom Teruah again. But we know this is three years later. So Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, this is going to be three years later. So we had our first trumpet, Revelation chapter 1, verse 10. Then we have three years, year 1, year 2, year 3. Okay, so we come over here. And we have Revelation 4, 1. We have another trumpet being blown. Okay, this is another Yom Kippur. This is the fall feast. We have conf confirmation of this in the book of Esther. The king sits on the throne. Okay, and then it talks about the third year. Okay, so those are the three years. Those are starting from Yom Teruah. Three years later, Yom Teruah. Okay, that will be Yom Teruah in the year um, 2013. Okay, all right. Then we get to Revelation chapter 5. Okay, so when the door is open, then you see the festivities before the throne. And then we see, chapter 5, verse 6, we see the lamb slain. And we hear the song of the lamb. Okay, so when the lamb is slain, this is telling us about the lamb in Passover. The Passover lamb slain. Okay, that's Passover. So this is six months after Yom Teruah. So Yom Teruah is here. Six months later, okay, this is going to bring us to the springtime of 2014 in our first blood moon okay then revelation 6 1 okay we once again we see the passover lamb he opens the seals okay so revelation 6 1 passover is the same passover that we just saw in revelation chapter 5 okay it's same passover same precise date that same passover is that blood moon of 2014 then we have four blood moons we have passover we have tabernacles, we have Passover tabernacles. That's the lunar tetrad, very significant blood moons that transpired beginning in 2014, okay? So that's the same Passover that it's talking about in Revelation chapter 5, verse 6, Revelation 6, 1. Then we get to Revelation chapter 8, verse 1. The angel had a golden censer before the throne. Golden censer before the throne is an angel acting as high priest on Yom Kippur. So this is now going to bring us Three and a half years later, okay, so three and a half years later from the blood moons, okay, now we come to Yom Kippur, 
All right, and this is going to be Yom Kippur, and this is going to be in 2017. All right, so then we go to our next page, okay, and then we uh, we continue. So that's the Revelation 12 sign, as you can see there, Revelation 12. So that's also Revelation 8, 1, okay, so that's Yom Kippur. And on the same day, Revelation 11, 19, the temple of... Um, was opened in heaven and it was seen the Ark of the Covenant. So when you're seeing the Ark of the Covenant, that's again Yom Kippur, the high priest going for the Ark of the Covenant, same day as Revelation 8, verse 1. Okay? So the next verse says, John saw a woman clothed with the sun. Okay? So when she's clothed with the sun, that's the fall equinox. So the same precise day, Yom Kippur is on the fall equinox, 2017, and the moon is under her feet. Okay, and we had the planets align, forming her crown of 12 stars. Okay, so this is the Revelation 12 sign on the same exact day, September 22nd, 2017. That's Yom Kippur 2017. So Revelation 8, 1, the last verse in Revelation 11, and Revelation 12 is all showing us the same feast, Yom Kippur 2017. Now, then we, then we get three and a half years later. So that's this sign here. Then it says, three and a half years later, the woman had a place prepared of God, which is the tabernacle. So this is 1,260 days later. So 1,260 days later, okay, from then is going to bring us to this year, 2021. Okay, so that's Revelation 12, and we go through Revelation 12. Now what we're going to have, guys, is Revelation 12, we're going to look at a um, all the feasts going from the first month to the fifth month. Okay. It's not really a feast, but we all know the significance of the ninth of Av. Okay, so the ninth of Av. So we're going from the first month to the fifth month. Av is the fifth month. Okay, and so Revelation 12 is going to walk us through all the feasts in a very, very significant timetable in Revelation in, in this year 2021. So this would have been this year, the Passover earlier this year, going to the fifth month, the ninth of Av. Okay. So she had a place prepared. So after the sign, you have 1,260 days, you come to 2021, and that's the first day of the first month. So the tabernacle is set. So she had the place prepared to God. That's the tabernacle, representing the tab tabernacle of the testimony. Okay. You can see that in Exodus 40, and we'll show you that again. Then Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, they overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the word of his testimony, that is Passover. The blood of the lamb is the Passover lamb. So we went from the first day of the first month to the 14th day of the first month. Okay, see that? Then we get, they, and then it says, they, same verse, they love not their lives unto death. Okay, then this loving lot in your lives unto death is faith in the resurrection. So this is Resurrection Sunday. Okay, so this will be uh, the 19th day of the first month. Okay, including the the uh, Passover lamb, Christ being sacrificed for us, and then the resurrection Sunday, which is called first fruits. On first fruits, you then count fifty days. So what you do is you count fifty days to Pentecost. Okay, then Revelation twelve twelve, the very next verse: Rejoice, you heavens, and you that tabernacle in heaven or dwell in heaven. So you rejoice on the Feast of Pentecost, the Feast of Weeks, or also called the Feast of Shavuot. Okay, so that's Revelation 12, 12. Rejoice you heavens. You're commanded to rejoice on that day. So that's what it's talking about. So that's 50 days after first fruits. You come to Feast of Weeks. Now we're at the eighth day of the third month. Then we get to Revelation 12, 14. The woman is given two wings of an eagle to fly into the wilderness into her place. So this is again the tabernacle. Okay, now... This tabernacle here, what it's talking about, it's actually going to refer to the ninth of Av. So that's going to be another six weeks. So you got the Feast of Weeks, and then you count another 50 days again, or seven weeks again, and you come to the ninth of Av, which is the fifth month, okay? The wilderness in her place, okay? Now, we know this from a couple sources, but let's go through them quick. Exodus 19, verse 1. It's the third month, 15th day. He bore you on eagle's wings, Okay, so we bore on eagle's wings. Then Moses goes to the mountain 40 days. Okay, so you see the eagle's wings, and then you see Moses 40 days. It's going to bring us again to the ninth of Av because we see in Matthew 24, uh, 23, verse 27, Christ says, I would have gathered you as a hen gathers her chicks, but your house is made desolate. So he's talking about the gathering of the eagle's wings, and the house desolate is the ninth of Av. 
okay? And he said, behold, you will not see one stone upon another. That's the ninth of Av, okay? So that's the eagle's wings this year, the gathering of the wings, and the tabernacle, okay? That's why we're showing you the tabernacle now because it's representing this tabernacle here at Revelation 12, 14. Then in the same chapter, okay, so we have the woman clothed with the sun, all right? And then all of this is happening in in a five-month period in 2021. And at the end, it says the dragon made war with the others of her seed. Okay, this is Armageddon. So Armageddon is going to be uh, towards the sixth bowl and towards the end. Okay, that's going to be at the end uh, time period. All right, when the dragon makes war with the others of her seed. So this is six, six, seven years after the Revelation 12 sign, approximately. Okay, so that's Armageddon. Okay, and then of course, before that, you would have the wedding supper of the Lamb, and we didn't put it on here, but it basically Purim in the book of Esther represents the wedding supper of the Lamb. So Purim is also included, all right, as as the feast and reflected in the book of Revelation. Okay, now let's go to Revelation 15 because we have more uh, things happening. Revelation 15, two, the vict and those that got victory over the beast were on the sea of glass with harps. Okay, you see, you celebrate with harps. On the beginning of every month, particularly the first month and seventh month, so you get to blow the trumpet, but you also play your harps, and they sing the Song of Moses and the Song of Lamb. So when was the Song of Moses? Well, we saw them sing when they crossed the Red Sea, and the Song of the Lamb is what? Passover. So Passover season, talking about Revelation 15 to then 15, 5, the, temp the temple of the tabernacle was opened in heaven. And it was filled with smoke from the glory of God. No man was able to enter until the seven last bowls were fulfilled. So again, this is the same tabernacle set in Revelation 15, 5, as we saw up here in Revelation 12, verse 6, when the tabernacle was set on what? The first day of the first month. So we consider that this here is the same date as this, same time period, okay? So again, that's the tabernacle being set on the first day of the first month. We know this from Exodus 40. Moses was not able to enter into the tabernacle because of the glory of Yahweh. That was on a precise day in Exodus 40 of the first day of the first month. Okay, I know that was a lot. So that's why I encourage you to uh, get the notes. I'll make the notes uh, available where you can get that uh, PDF file and download and take some time to study that. I know it's a lot of information, but it's worth the study. So that's our tabernacle. We talked about Psalm 91. We talked about the hoopah. Okay, the uh, themes for tabernacles this year, I believe, is uh, is uh, warfare, spiritual warfare. So guys, thanks for God for watching. Fear God, give glory to Him for the hour's judgment has come. Worship Him that made the heavens, the earth, the seas, and the fountains of waters. Amen.